Hello! Time for an afternoon edition of Mornings with Stanley. It was an early morning today. Went to the church. We got all the pallets out. Then we put the pumpkins on. The pumpkins are supposed to arrive around 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. They're on their way from New Mexico. And um, it's always a great time to see the pumpkins all over the, the front yard of, of the church. And it's all it's exciting that they're coming. And um, we had a good group there to move, put the pallets out. So they're, they're, I guess, from about 8 to, got home about 11.30. Um, pallets are heavy. I think, I don't know what, <laughs> this is my first year to help with the pallets. I don't know if I, how I got out of it in the past. Um, I think they usually do it on a Thursday. And it seems like it, there's always some committee meeting. I'm on a, you know, the board of the district committee on ministry. It seems like maybe there's always a, one of their meetings or some kind of clergy meeting on a on a Thursday, the day that we were doing the pallets. So I've never done it before, but thank you, pandemic. <laughs> I get to do work I didn't plan on doing. No, it was great. It was good good to um, do that. Got some exercise, got some extra steps in. And um, anyway, it's a good time. And um, But I didn't get to take Stanley and Lucy for their walk until, until a few minutes ago. It's now about two o'clock. We just got back from our walk and um, it was a warmer walk than it would have been this morning when it was real foggy and cool outside. It wasn't too bad. I think it was just, well, it's just now 81 degrees outside. So it's been a good day. Lucy seemed to get a little overheated on the way back, but, but when I looked at my watch, it was about 79. That's not too bad, but the sun was out and that's great. So, that's what's going on here. Tomorrow is going to be another late edition of Mornings with Stanley because I'll have to get to the church for God Squad where we take food out to a mobile home park. We'll be, um, have to be at the church by 8.30. So, and then, um, then the pumpkins arrive around 10. So we'll be there till about 10.30 or 11. I mean, 11.30 or 12, I should say. And then my brother is coming into town, he and his wife, and they're bringing me some furniture. They just built a new house out in Hallsville, and they don't have room for this one. It's a TV table, and um, the one I have is pretty cheap, so they're giving me theirs. And I'm giving them mine, my cheap one, and they're going to sell it in a garage sale. Is that an even exchange? I think I'm coming out ahead on this deal. Maybe I'll let them get the money, keep the money from anything I sell in their garage sale. So anyway, that's what's going on here. Um, and I'm about to kick this guy out. Lucy just conked out in the middle of the floor over there. I guess the walk did her in. She's just laying down over there. I guess she's okay. Stanley, you ready to leave the room? Ready to leave the room? Let's go. Come on, let's go. Good puppy. Okay, we are leaving 1st Peter today and going to 2nd Peter chapter 1 verses 3 through 8. His divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Thus he has given us through these things his precious and very great promises so that through them you may escape from the corruption that is in the world because of lust and maybe become participants of the divine nature. For this very reason, you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness and goodness with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with endurance and endurance with godliness and godliness with mutual affection and mutual affection with love. For if these things are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our reading from week 23, Friday of week 23, the self-urge decides. We have been saying that the Christian faith, as well as the psychiatric and the humanistic approaches, all converge upon the fact that love is the basic urge and the basic need in life. 
If so, the question arises, why don't we live by love? Why is there so much hate and resentment among human beings? When we give vent to our natures, why doesn't love come out? When we do give vent, don't selfishness and hate come out more often than not? This brings us to the crux of our problem. The answer seems to be that the self-urge can decide in which direction the deeper and more basic urges, urges can go. Love is that deepest urge, but self is a deciding urge. The freedom of the personality lies in the self-urge. The self is free to choose. It can direct the love urge. It can entwine this love urge around itself. In that case, self-loves become dominant. The personality becomes self-centered. In that case, agape becomes eros and is prostituted to lower ends. Perversion takes place. An unhappy, self-centered person results. Or the self can direct the agape towards sex. The self becomes sex-dominated being, becomes a sex-dominated being. Love degenerates and becomes love of physical emotion. But that is self-defeating. For those who are most sex-obsessed get the least out of it. It is a descending spiral. Said a woman to me, this man and I set up relations apart from marriage and we lived together for seven years. At first we thought we were happy, but gradually became dreadfully unhappy and miserable. Now we are completely disillusioned. But where the self directs the agape toward the God-intended relationship of one man and one woman, joined together by God in a lifelong partnership, their joy reigns and the personalities of each are heightened. As heaven bends over and kisses the whole into beauty and blessedness, nothing more beautiful. It is the self that decides. But if instead of intelligent decision, sex passion rules, then the personality is a chaos of con conflicting emotions. Unhappiness rules. Here's our prayer for today. O oh God, may we this day stand off from ourselves and see ourselves as you have made us, free but not free to choose the results or consequences of our choices. Then give us sense and sense to act upon sense. In Jesus' name, amen. And our affirmation for the day, since the self decides, the self must be safely God's. Jesus is Lord.